Hi, welcome to the part 3 of module 1. In this presentation, we will compare the anatomy of the bones of the thoracic limb. The bones of the thoracic limb includes the scapula or the shoulder bone, the humerus or the bone of the arm or brachium, the radius and ulna forming the bones of the forearm or antebrachium, the carpals, metacarpals, and the bones of the digits. At the same time, it is also important to recall the joints present in the thoracic limb. Between the glenoid cavity of the scapula and the head of the humerus is the shoulder joint. The elbow joint is formed by the articulation between the humeral condyles and the radius with the olecranon process of the ulna. The carpal joint is formed by numerous articulations between the distal end of the radius and ulna with the bones of the proximal row of the carpal bones. It is also formed by the articulations between the carpal bones via the intercarpal joints. The fetlock is found between the metacarpal and the proximal phalanx or the metacarpophalangeal joint. The pastern is the proximal interphalangeal articulation while the coffin joint is the distal interphalangeal joint. In the next slides, we will compare the different bones of the thoracic limb. In this slide, you can see the scapula of different domestic animals. In dogs, the scapular spine divides the lateral surface into two equal fossae. The scapular spine has a distinct acromion but lacks the trapezius tubercle. Here is the trapezius tubercle. The trapezius tubercle is present at the scapular spine of pig and horse as well as in large ruminant. It is very distinct in the pig scapula as shown here. We can also use this trapezius tubercle in the scapula of the pig to determine the infra and the supraspinous fossa. The tubercle always overhangs at the infraspinous fossa as shown here. The acromion is absent in pig and the spine fades distally. This is the same in the case of the horse. The trapezius tubercle is present but not as distinct in the pig. The spine divides the lateral surface into two unequal fossae. The infraspinous fossa is broader while the supraspinous fossa is narrower. Also, the scapular spine fades distally and there is no acromion. In ruminants, the goat scapula is distinctly triangular in shape. There is also an equal fossae with the infraspinous being broader as shown here. There is also an acromion but not as distinct as in the dog. The scapula of the cattle, on the other hand, is also distinctly triangular like in the goat but bigger in size. There is also an equal size of the fossae and the acromion is present at the distal end of the scapular spine. In cat, the scapula is also triangular with the scapular spine dividing the fossae equally like in the dogs. There is an acromion and in addition, there is the suprahamate process, a caudal projection of the acromion. This is present only in cats. The scapular cartilage is a cartilaginous structure at the dorsal border of the scapula. In horse, ruminants, and in pig, the scapular cartilage is a broad, thin structure as shown here. In dogs, the scapular cartilage is narrow. Since most of our domestic animals are quadrupeds and need their thoracic limb under their bodies, the clavicle is absent or rudimentary. However, this is still present in cats. Here is a radiograph of the shoulder joint with the clavicle of the cat. Note that it is separate and non-articulating bone in cats as shown here. This bone should not be mistaken for a bone in the esophagus on a lateral radiograph. In dogs, this is reduced as the clavicular intersection separating the clidobrachialis and clidocephalicus of the brachiocephalicus muscle. The clavicle is absent in horse, cattle, and pig. In contrast with the previously discussed animals, birds have a complete set of pectoral girdle composed of the scapula, the coracoid, and the clavicle. As you can see here, 
the scapula of birds is elongated and blade-like. It is relatively immobile and is firmly held to the ribs by the muscles and ligaments. The coracoid extends between the sternum and the shoulder joint. It acts to hold the wings away from the sternum during flight. In mammals, the coracoid is reduced to a small process on the medial side of the supraglenoid tubercle for the attachment of the coracobrachialis muscle. The right and left clavicles of birds fused forming the furcula or most commonly known as the wishbone. The furcula acts as a spring holding the shoulder joints at optimum distance during flight. Between the bones of the pectoral girdle is the triosial canal which is transverse by the tendons of the elevator of the wing, the supracoracoid muscle. Now let us compare the humerus. Please note that this is not the actual size relative to the size of the other animal's bone. In dogs, one of the distinguishing features is the presence of the supratrochlear foramen. You may recall from your gross anatomy that no structures pass through this foramen and is present only in dogs. In cats, the supracondylar foramen is present at the medial epicondyle. This foramen is present only in the humerus of cats. To remember which side it is on, remember that the median nerve and the brachial vessels pass through it. In pigs, the lateral or the greater tuberosity almost converts the bicipital groove into a foramen as shown here. In the horse, the humerus can be identified by the presence of an intermediate tubercle at the bicipital groove. Here is an image for you to imagine the location of the intermediate tubercle. In cattle, there is a massive greater tuberosity overhanging the bicipital groove. The greater tubercle is divided into a cranial and a caudal part in all animals except in cats. In birds, the humerus is thin and the medullary cavity contains network of trabeculae which increases the strength of the bone. Many of the long bones of birds like the humerus are pneumatized. The humerus has a pectoral crest for the attachment of the pectoral muscle. The bones of the forearm include the medially located radius and the laterally located ulna. As a general rule, the ulna is longer than the radius with the exception of the horse which we will show in the next slide. We can compare the animals based on the fusion of the two bones and the location of the interosseous space. In dogs and cats, the ulna is not completely fused with the radius and has a distinct interosseous space in the entire antebrachial length. In ruminants, represented here by the cattle and goat, the ulna is fused with the radius and has a proximal and a distal interosseous space. In pigs, the ulna is not necessarily fused with the radius and has a long interosseous space like in the carnivores. In contrast with the rest of the quadrupeds, the horse ulna is shorter than the radius. As schematically shown here, the ulna is fused with around proximal two-thirds of the radius. Only a proximal interosseous space is present in contrast to the ruminant's proximal and distal interosseous space. Interestingly, in birds, the ulna is more massive and longer than the radius as shown here. The two bones are not fused and there is a relatively wide interosseous space. For the carpus, let us compare by identifying the present and absent carpal bones per species. Among the animals being studied, let us consider the pig as our reference. There are two rows of carpal bones, the proximal and the distal rows. At the proximal row are the radial carpal bone, intermediate carpal bone, ulnar carpal bone, and the accessory carpal bone. At the distal row are the first, second, third, and fourth carpal bones. In pigs, all these carpal bones are present with a total of eight carpal bones. Now let us check the carpal bones of other animals. In dogs, 
the radial carpal bone and the intermediate carpal bones are fused. The rest are present, thus they only have seven carpal bones. In horse, the first carpal bone is either present or absent, thus they can have either seven or eight carpal bones. In ruminants, the bones of the proximal row are all present. The first carpal bone is missing. The second and the third carpal bone are fused, and the fourth carpal bone is present. They have a total of six carpal bones. Now let us compare the metacarpal and the digital bones. As a default, there are five metacarpal bones. Let us take a look at the manus of the dog. There are five metacarpal bones. As a review, the first metacarpal bone has only two digital bones. The rest have three digital bones named as proximal, middle, and distal phalanx. Now let us take a look at the metacarpal and digital bones of pigs. As you can see here, there are only four present. The first metacarpal bone is missing. The third and the fourth metacarpal bones are well developed while the second and the fifth were reduced. All the present metacarpal bones bear three digital bones as shown here. In cattle, the third and the fourth metacarpal bones are united on the proximal and the middle part to form the large metacarpal bone. Take a look at the distal extremities in which they articulate separately with the proximal phalanges. The fifth metacarpal bone is reduced to become the small metacarpal bone. The first and the second metacarpal bones are lacking. The functional metacarpal bones bear three digital bones each as shown here. In the horse, only the third metacarpal bone is fully developed called the cannon bone. This metacarpal bone is the only weight bearing. The second and the fourth metacarpal bones were reduced and fused with the cannon bone as the splint bones. The first and the fifth metacarpal bones are missing. Only the cannon bone bears the digital bones. A great modification is seen in birds. The carpus is consists of only two, the ulnar carpal bone and the radial carpal bone. The distal row of the carpal bones fused with the metacarpal bone forming the carpometacarpal bone. In terms of the digits, birds have only three digits. The first digit is called the alula. It bears two phalanges. Next is called the major digit and bears two phalanges. And finally, the minor digit which bears only one phalanx. And that ends our discussion on the part 3 of module 1. You may now proceed to the part 4 in which we will compare the bones of the pelvic limb of different domestic animals.